Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. Alright folks, in this Tips and Tricks episode we're going to go over how to rig a couple of different ways a super effective, ultra productive, world famous trolling lure that's been around since 1926. That's right, we're going to go over how to rig the white trolling feather. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Alright, so like I said folks, we're going to go over a couple of different ways of how to rig this. This is a white trolling feather. It catches everything. You can take it out deep into the stream. It's going to catch those nice pelagics like tuna and dolphin. You'll also catch billfish with this thing, no problem. So of course, when you rig it up for going for those pelagics, you're going to want to use a heavier duty leader. That way you don't get chafed off by those little teeth or that sandpaper type bill on a billfish. And of course, you can take it up over those deep ledges of the reef and up into the shallows of the reef. You're going to catch those nice, hefty, voracious predators with those sharp teeth like kingfish, barracuda, and yes, of course, wahoo will tear into these. If you're looking to catch wahoo seriously, you might want to consider learning how to use one of these. All right, folks, so we're not going to waste much more time talking about the lure. We're going to get into the rigging right now. The first way we're going to show you how to rig it is we're going to show you how to do the offshore topwater trolling version, hooking it up to monofilament leader. So here we go. Okay, so to do this properly, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need your white trolling feather. This one happens to be from the company No Alibi. It has a two ounce leaded head. A cutting tool, two 80 J hooks. These ones happen to be from the company Mustad. About eight feet of 80 pound monofilament leader. Two double barrel crimps rated for 80 pound test. And a crimping tool. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to make a tandem hook set up with these two hooks. The way you do that is you find where the shank loops around and forms an eye, right where that eye curves back in and meets the shank. You put your cutting tool there and you pinch down and what that will do is that will open up the eye. Just like that, you take your second hook and you put it in backwards, feed it on, and you've hooked your two hooks together. Now what we have to do is close the eye so that the lead hook does not pop out. To do that, you simply put that eye in the back edge of your cutting tool. And you're going to just carefully, without make, getting it to slip, pinch it closed. And there you have it. Your hooks are hooked together in a tandem hook setup. Okay, and now the next thing we are going to do is we are going to take what will be the business end of our leader and we are going to feed it through the eye that is on the nose of the lure. Feed it all the way back till it comes out. Find it and pull you out some. All right, the next thing we'll do is we're going to take one of our little double barrel crimps and we are going to feed it on to the end of the leader. Pull it through about, you know, an inch or so. Feed that through the eye of your lead hook. Loop it around and put it back in the other barrel of the crimp. So we have something like this. Now we are going to pull down on that crimp and leave just a little bit of breathing room so that we can get some stretch on it. You don't want it to be super tight, but you don't want to have a big uh, loop around the end of your leader. Because we are using a crimp and crotch breaks are real things. Next thing we'll do is we'll take our crimp tool. We're going to use the appropriate gauge crimping setting making sure not to pinch our line get the crimp right in the middle of the tool and we will give it a good pinch and there we have it 
Our hooks are attached to our leader. Give it a tug, make sure it ain't pulling out. Now, this is the important part. What we've got here is our hooks are set in. When we drape it back, we have our trailer hook hanging out just beyond the edge, the back edge of the lure. This is what you want. Remember, fish, when they strike bait, usually hit the tail and disable the prey. That's why you want a hook back here. Having a hook up in here hidden, you can end up with short strikes sometimes. All right, and now the next thing we're gonna do to complete the lure is we will find the main line end of our leader and we are going to use our other crimp right here and we're going to fasten it on and we are going to make a loop on the main line end so that we can attach it to our rod and reel so you want to leave about you know three quarters to an inch loop and again use the appropriate setting on your crimp tool Good to go, pinch it closed, and that's it. Your lure is done, you're good to go. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do, if you wanna get up and trolling, is you will take a snap swivel with a coast lock from your main line of your reel. You're simply going to fasten it on, close the clasp, you're good to go. You're gonna pitch that bad boy in the water, get up and trolling, and wait for the bite. All right, so that's how you do it. It's not complicated at all. Some leader, a few crimps, double hook tandem setup, and your lure. Get it out trolling. You're gonna troll it at about six to eight knots, looking for those pelagics. Make them chase you down. Remember, you're trolling. You are in pursuit of actively hunting fish. You're not giving them the chance to run up and examine your bait. You want them to chase it down and act on the impulse to feed. All right, so now that we know how to rig it up that way, which is for top water offshore trolling. And when I say offshore, I mean, man, take it out five, 10, 15, 20 miles. It will help you find fish. It is a high fish attractant. So now that we've done that method, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to put some wire leader on it, and go for the toothy critters in closer over the reef and over the deep ledge of the reef, you know, get into that bite with those nasty fish with big teeth. Those kingfish, kudas, wahoo, stuff that'll cut you off. So, of course, that means we're going with some wire leader. So let's get into this right now. Okay, to do this version properly, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need your white trolling feather. Another 8-0 tandem hook setup. Between 12 and 18 inches of wire leader. This particular wire leader is number four 40 pound test from the company Malin. And a haywire twist tool if you'd like to use one, which I do. So the first thing I want to explain is typically I would put on my hooks first, but in case you can't tell, there's really no way it's very difficult to find uh, where the hold comes out of the back because of all the feathers. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to feed the business end of our wire leader through the nose hole of the lure. Going to get it to come out the back. And we're gonna pull on it and leave a little bit hanging out the uh, nose so you don't lose it. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to feed on our hooks. And we're going to feed on the tag end of our wire leader through the solid state of the haywire twist tool. Then we're going to bend it around. I'll take this whole setup and do like this. That way I'm comfortable. And then we are going to form a loop right by our hooks. Pinch down our loop, being sure not to kink the wire leader. And we are going to start twisting the haywire twist tool till we get about 10 to 15 twists on our wire. Once you've got enough twists and you're good, you release the wire leader. And make a 90 degree bend. And then we are going to do barrel wraps. You wanna try and get your barrel wraps packed as tightly as you can. That way they sort of fasten your knot real good and secure it down. And you're gonna to wanna to again, you're gonna to wanna to do about six to eight barrel wraps. If they don't look pretty, 
it's not the end of the world you don't have to cut it off you just want to try and make them as best you can and again you don't want to kink the end of your leader where your hooks are attaching all right so we got about six to eight barrel wraps there we're good our hooks are on now to break off this tag end you simply just bend it back and forth and it will snap off and it'll give you a nice clean break so that you don't get snagged on the portion where it wraps around and leads right there. You can run your fingers over it and it doesn't cut you. Here's your tack. All right, so now we can just simply pull our hooks up. And again, we're good. We've got the hook hanging just out beyond it. This is great if you're going for toothy critters. You can hook on a strip bait or you can troll it plain and you don't got to worry about getting cut off. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, we want to troll this on a planer or hook it onto a swivel up on top. So what we'll do to do that version of it is we will simply make another haywire twist with just a loop up at the top end of it. So we'll come over here. We're going to flip our leader around. Make sure you're comfortable when you're tying your knots. The worst thing you can ever really do is be uncomfortable and, you know, Tie a bad knot simply because you're out of position when you're trying to tie it. Give it again, give it about, you know, 10 to 15 twists. Make sure you've got a good knot going on. You don't want it to slip. Once you've got enough twists, take it. Take your tag, bend your tag at 90 degrees. And again, barrel wraps. Nice. Try to get them as tightly packed as you can. Again, being sure not to kink the little loop up here at the end. All right, once you've got enough barrel wraps going on, six to eight barrel wraps, you're good to go. All you will simply do is you will take that and snap your tag end off again. Just bend it back and forth until it snaps off and you're good to go. You've got a seamless connection right there where you won't get snagged and get cut. So there you go, that's your whole lure. You're good to go. So again, this version of what we just did is made for hooking a swivel on. And I would say, all right, hey, let's do something like we're gonna take it out planer trolling. If we were gonna take this lure out planer trolling, what we would wanna do is we've got our main line swivel, which is a 300 pound swivel hook to braid. We would hook that to the ring on our planer. Fasten that real good. Then we would take our leader. Our leader is 100 feet of 60 pound monofilament. We take the leader end, which is also a 300 pound swivel with a coast lock. Fasten that down, good to go. And then we'll take the other end of our leader, which is a number size seven snap swivel with a coast lock again. And we would simply hook on that loop that we made with the haywire twist right there. And we're good to go. We're all rigged up to go planer trolling. Again, you can hook on a bonita strip, mullet strip, whatever you want, or you can troll this plane. This lure is super effective, gives great action in the water, great flare, great smoke, and it gets chewed up all the time. Okay, so that's one way to hook it up with a wire leader with a loop on the end so that you can hook it onto a swivel on your main line or do like I showed in the example, take it out and do some planer trolling with it. Now let's say you don't wanna use a swivel, you wanna use a more stealthy approach and hook that wire leader straight onto your main line. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now in this third and final version of rigging up the trolling feather. So the next version of what we're gonna do is we are going to say we don't want to use a swivel on the end of our wire leader. We wanna connect it directly to our main line without a swivel. This can be done and I'm gonna show you how to do it. We're gonna do it with what's called an Albright knot. So what we'll do is we're going to form a loop at the end of our wire leader without pinching it, without kinking it. We'll send the main line of our mono from the backside to the front. And we're gonna pull out about a six to an eight inch tack. All right, then what we're gonna do is we are going to pinch all three lines. We're gonna pinch the main line of our wire, the tag of our wire, and the tag of our mono, just like this. Then we are going to start wrapping around the back side. 
about six times up towards the tip of this loop. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, our initial loop comes out the back. When you exit with your tag, you want it to come out the opposite end, which will be the front. So we're gonna send it from the back to the front, have it come out the opposite side, and we are simply going to start cinching down on this so that it pulls the right way. Now to get it tight, you simply take your hooks, you'll hook them on the end of your workbench. You're going to pull your tag end off to the side and cinch down on it. And that will pull it tight and that will form the Albright knot for you. And that's not gonna come undone. You can see that. So this tag end comes out perpendicular on the end. If it's following your main line, it's not done right and you need to redo it. And that's tight right there, that ain't going nowhere. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to trim off the tag of our mono. Good to go. And again, this is a solid knot. You don't have to worry about it coming undone. But you've got this big tag right here from your wire. So what we're gonna do to really solidify this and make sure that this does not come undone is I like to give it a little special touch at the very end. And instead of just cutting off this tag that I can get stabbed with, we're gonna do a couple little barrel wraps. So we'll twist it to the, about a 90 degree angle. And we're gonna, you know, just give it a couple of wraps around itself. It's not gonna wrap real tight and they're almost gonna look like you're twisting one wire around the other, but that's good enough. And again, it doesn't have to be very many. Two, three, maybe four. And then you'll be good to go. And then again, we're just gonna break this tag end of the wire off simply the other way we do with any other barrel wrap, just by snapping it so that you won't get cut by it when you're trolling. And that is how you hook that leader on to your main line with wire leader without using any swivel. And again, you can troll it up on top. You can troll it with a strip. You can put this on a planer directly onto your planer leader, just like this if you want to, however you want, and you're good to go. All right, so that's how you do that. It's a basic, simple Albright knot tied from your main line onto your wire leader. It's super strong, it's not going anywhere. And again, you gotta remember, do not kink that initial knot. What's gonna happen is when you cinch down on your main line of mono, it will pull and make a very tiny loop at the end of it. It will not kink it. And you know, you can troll these plain or you can troll them with strip baits. Strip baits are only an additive that can help increase your hookup ratio if that's what you're into doing. But trust me when I say, these are high fish attractants. You don't need that strip bait. You're gonna get into the bite with them. And so when you're trolling these lures, you're gonna to wanna to do between six to eight knots. Again, like I said before, enticing the impulse to feed on actively hunting fish. That's what we're doing. Like I said, you can take these things and troll them anywhere, in the shallows of the reef, off the deep ledges of the reef, over structures like wrecks, way offshore out in the stream, they catch everything. And if you're looking for fish like mahi-mahi, oh man, these things are definitely mahi candy. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned the three different ways to rig up the white trolling feather. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.